Hi, my name is Robert Feranek and in this video you are going to design a board in Altium Designer. Even if you have never ever designed any board before, when you follow this tutorial step by step, then by the end of this video you will design this board and you will know how to use Altium Designer for your own project. In this tutorial, you will learn how to draw schematic in Altium Designer. You will learn how to create schematic symbols in schematic symbol library. So this will help you to create any symbol which you may ever need in your schematic. You will learn how to create footprints for all the components what you may need in your PCB. And of course, we are going to create the PCB. So you will learn how to place the components on the board and how to connect them together. Uh, we are going to also generate all the documents which you need to manufacture this PCB. So for example, you will know how to generate the Gerber files. Uh, you will also know how to generate, generate all the kind of different documentation. For example, assembly drawing and also BOM, bill of material, which you will need when you will be building your boards. So, let's start. Open Altium Designer, click on File, New, Project, Empty Project, I'm going to call it Let YouTube and I'm going to save it here. Great. Right click on the project, add new to project schematic, right click add PCB, right click add schematic library, go down here on project, right click add PCB library. Again, go back to the project. In case you can't see some of these panels, what I will be using in this video, then you can always go and click on these panels button and you can enable them here. Okay, so for example, currently we are using this projects panel, which is this one. We are going to save all the files, right click on the schematic, save as. I'm going to call it let, save, right click on the PCB, Save as. I'm going to call it let. Right click on the PCB library. Save as. I'm going to call it let PCB lib. And save also the schematic library. I'm going to call it let Sahalip. We are going to create our first component. Go to Google, search for Digikey. And we are going to find header 2.54 millimeter. Click on this one. We would like to use Molex in stock with 3D model. Apply all. Two positions, one row, board to cable, wire, and true hole. Apply. And we are going to use this one. Copy the DigiKey par number, just left click here, go to Altium, open our schematic symbol library, double click here, click on panels, manufacture part search, I'm going to move it here so we can see it better, right click, paste, enter. This is the component what we would like to use in our schematic, uh, left click on this small triangle, Find DigiKey here, 
This is the component what we would like to import into our schematic symbol library because we can buy it in one piece. And this is super important. Uh, when you press right click here, we are going to use this import uh, command. But uh, you will only see this command if this schematic symbol library is open here in the background. Okay? So uh, when you are importing a component into your schematic symbol library, it has to be open in background. Otherwise, you will not see this option here. So right click, import. We can close this. And we are going to create our very first symbol. Click on place, pin, use mouse wheel to zoom in. Press tab, right here, one, tab, tab, plus. Left click here, left click to place pin, left click, escape. Uh, when this uh, pin number two is selected like this, go here and change this to minus. Left click, click on place, rectangle, left click, left click, escape, edit, move, send to back, left click, escape, select this and hide it. Before we continue, I'm going to change uh, grid color so you can see better how I place the pins because it's like super important. I need to refresh this view. Perfect. When you are placing pins in your schematic symbol, you always have to place this uh, side of the pin with this white square outside of the symbol, okay? This white square is only on one side of the pin. This is the electrical uh, side of the pin where you can connect nets. And when you are placing uh, pins, then uh, always be sure you are using a 100 mil grid. Down here you can see currently I'm using 10 mil grid. So when uh, I'm placing this pin, press G on your keyboard, uh, watch this grid is going to change, okay? So press G until you see the grid is 100 mil and then place the pin, okay? Never place the pin or uh, somewhere like here. It always has to be on the grid because then you will have a lot of problems when you will be creating schematic. So again, press G on your keyboard until the grid is 100 mils, like now, and place it. Our symbol is almost finished. I'm going to set this designator to J question mark and comment is going to be 1x2 header. Uh, basically, these two values are these values which you will see in the finished schematic. Uh, I'm going to open uh, VGKey and I'm going to copy this short description and I'm going to place it here. Uh, go to this schematic uh, library panel. Uh, this is the empty component which is there by default. We can delete it and this is our symbol which we just created. Save. This uh, schematic library panel is super important because here you will see list of all the symbols inside of your schematic symbol library. Currently we only have there one symbol, the one which we have just created. Uh, if you can't see this panel, then click on panels and you can enable it here. Uh, also, what I would like to explain, uh, when we imported uh, the uh, symbol or component from the DigiKey, basically what we did, we imported also some parameters or some information about the component, like manufacturer or manufacturer part number, but also information about prices. And all this information can be super useful later when we will be creating a bomb bill of material. So that's the main reason why we imported the component from the DigiKey. Next, we are going to create this resistor, what we need for our schematic. So go to DigiKey, right click, open in new tab, 
right here resistor 360R0805 enter click here we would like to use this one 1% in stock with 3D model apply and we are going to use this resistor I'm going to copy this cut and tape digikey part number and I'm going to show you different way how you can import components into your schematic symbol library so go into your schematic click on panels manufacture part search right click paste enter and uh, because uh, this component it already has symbol and footprint what you can do you can download them or because we have schematic open in background we can use this place command so left click here place the component into our schematic left click escape i'm going to close this and when this is selected you can just use right click copy go into our schematic symbol library schematic library panel right click and paste okay so this way we don't have to draw the symbol and we already uh, imported all the parameters together with this new component normally i don't do it this way uh, because you don't know exactly what everything was imported you can see here are also some footprints and everything and also for this tutorial maybe we would like to learn a little bit more how to draw components by ourselves so i'm going to delete this and we are going to create it from scratch do you remember how to do it just click on these panels manufacture part search because we are inside of the schematic symbol library we can use right click import watch what is going to happen here okay new component will appear here or new symbol we can close it and now we can draw this manually click on place pin zoom in press tab I'm going to change this to one tap tap one and also I would like to change the pin length to 100 mil click on this pause button now be sure you are using 100 mil grid so press G G okay and press spacebar to rotate spacebar spacebar left click spacebar spacebar left click escape uh, place the pins like this be sure the white square on both sides are facing out of our symbol select this and i'm going to hide the name hide the designator select also this and hide it click on place line left click uh, we would like to use different color press tab we would like to change it to blue and also uh, watch down here we would like to use different grid and also watch this y position where i will be placing the lines what i'm going to draw so press g okay press space bar to change the mode how we are drawing the line space bar space bar and now the y position i would like to use 30 like this left click now minus 30 left click left click left click left left right click right click change the designator to r question mark comment 360r and uh, i'm going to copy this short description from digikey and i'm going to place it here save our symbol we are going to create our led so go to digikey i'm going to open new one let 0603 LED indication I'm going to use this one 
in stock with 3D model and we would like to use maybe 2 volt and green one let's see what we have here okay we can use this one copy the cut tape digikey part number go to altium be sure you are inside of the schematic symbol library open manufacture part search right click paste enter uh, find digikey this one right click import click on place pin zoom in press tap one tap tap one press g g spacebar spacebar escape hide the names click on place line left click left right left click left right left left right left press g and place it uh, maybe like this right click right click click on place polygon press tab small border fill blue press G left click left left right click left press G put there like this and maybe like this right click escape hide this select this control C control V left click put here D question mark comment green go to digikey copy the description and save we have all the components we need so we can start drawing schematic go to projects double click on schematic we can delete this uh, symbol which we imported before just select it and press delete okay now in panels enable the components oh, i'm going to move it here now in this list select our schematic symbol library and here are the components what we have just created and which we are going to use for our schematic to place the components into your schematic simply just drag and drop them like this you can also zoom in press mouse wheel take the resistor press spacebar to rotate place it and also put here the LED. I'm going to change the color of the grid because it's too disturbing. I'm going to use something maybe like this. Much better. And uh, don't forget when you are placing components, always you use 100 mil grid. Okay? Be sure all the pins are on the 100 mil grid. We are going to connect everything together. Click on place, wire, left click, left, 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 left click, left, 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 right, left, left, right, right click, click on place, power port, Press tab. I would like to hide this uh, name. 
and I'm going to place it down here. Press tab, I would like to use bar. I'm going to call it plus 3v3. I would like to show the name and press spacebar to rotate, place it here, escape. We are going to name this net, click on place, net label, left click, escape, select it and just change the name to diode 1. Okay, so this one is called ground, you can see this net is called ground, this one is plus 3v3 because this one is called plus 3v3 and this net which is here is called diode 1 because there is this net label. We have schematic, now we need to create footprints. Footprints are used in PCB. Double click on our PCB library, click on tools and select footprint wizard. We are going to create footprint for our resistor. Click on next, resistors in millimeters, next. We are using SMT resistor, next. Go to DigiKey, find our resistor, open datasheet, uh, search for information about footprint, footprint and soldering profile. Please refer to datasheet, cheap resistors mounting. I'm going to search for this. I'm going to open it. And... Uh, Footprint dimensions for reflow soldering, so this is in the oven, 0805, these are the dimensions what we need, C and D, 0 0.9, 1.2, go to Altium, 1.2, 0 0.9, next, and here we need C plus B, 1.2 plus 0 0.9, it is 2.1. So put here 2.1. Uh, we can leave this default, it is not important. And I'm going to call it R0805. Next, finish. Go into our PCB library panel down here. This is the list of all the footprints inside of our library. Uh, we can delete this default footprint, just right click, delete, yes. And we are going to adjust our resistor footprint. In the properties panel, scroll down, select millimeters. Now left click into this area where is our footprint. Press G or G on your keyboard to change the grid. We would like to use 0 0.1 millimeter and now we can make some adjustments. Go to preferences, click on this wheel. In PCB editor, interactive routing, be sure you have all the settings same as I have them here, otherwise your Altium may behave a little bit differently. OK, left click to select, hover cursor here, press left button, hold it down and move it. Left click left button, hold it down and move it, move also this, left click, delete, left click, hover cursor here, and connect it like this, move it. Very quickly I'm going to explain what we can see here, so this yellow color it is something what is called top overlay and usually on PCB this is white color around the components. Then what is important is top paste. This layer is uh, telling us where the solder is going to be placed, so usually it is on the pads. Then uh, top solder, this is the uh, layer which is telling us where the green color is not going to be placed. So the green color of the PCB is going to be everywhere, but not in these uh, rectangles, which are around the pads. And this top layer, this is basically the copper, this is where the component is going to be soldered. We are going to place 3D model into our footprint, go to DigiKey, 
find our resistor, scroll down and download 3D model. Uh, I'm going to use this SNAP EDA website. You need to register to be able to download the uh, symbols and footprints and 3D models. So once you register and log in, you can go to 3D model and just download it. Once you download the 3D model, uh, it is this step file, which I have just downloaded. Uh, we can copy it inside of our project directory. So we have everything in one place. I'm going to create new directory called 3D models and I'm going to copy there the file what we have just downloaded. Go back to Altium. Be sure the mechanical layer 1 is active, just left click here. Click on place, 3D body. Select the file what we have just downloaded, open, left click, escape. Go to view and go to 3D layout mode or, or press number 3 on your keyboard. So this is 3D view of our footprint. Click on tools, 3D body placement, align face with board. We would like to place our component on top of our footprint. So select the component, left click, and now select the bottom of our path, which should be on the PCB, like this. Now uh, go back to the 2D view, view 2D layout mode or press number 2 on your keyboard. Hover cursor somewhere in the middle of the uh, 3D model, press left button, hold it down and move it into center of our footprint. Go back to the 3D view. Uh, if you like, you can click on this color, then select, for example, blue. Now the background is a little bit better for uh, checking the footprint. Left click inside of uh, this area, press shift, hold it down, and press the right button on your mouse, hold it down, and you can check our footprint. Okay? Everything seems to be fine, so we can go back to the 2D view, press number 2 on your keyboard. We are going to add one more layer, which is very useful for documentation. Click on this color here, or go into this view configuration, layers and colors. Now, right click somewhere here and add component layers pair. Uh, we would like to add uh, assembly layer, click OK. On our top assembly layer, we would like to use basically same shape as uh, what we have on this top overlay layer. And the simplest way to do it is copy and paste it. So, go into single layer mode, press Shift S on your keyboard, make the top overlay layer active, select these objects on this layer, Control C, and this is important, left click into middle or into center of our footprint. Now, make the top assembly layer active, go to edit, use this paste special, be sure this uh, paste on current layer is checked, click on paste, and left click into center of our footprint. Now we simply just copied uh, the shape from the top overlay, we copied this shape on the top assembly layer. On this assembly layer, we would like to add also component designator, click on place, string, left click, escape. When it is selected, delete it from here, click here, find dot designator. Now, uh, center, middle, change this to 0 0.7 and change this to 0 0.1. Now hold it here in the middle and place it into center of our footprint. I'll go out of this single layer mode, just press Shift S and Shift S again. When this assembly layer is used in our documentation, this is how it is going to look. OK? 
Okay, so this is the outline and this is the designator. And the assembly layer is used to tell us very nicely and very clearly where each component is located on our PCB. Go back to Altium, save our library, and we are going to create footprint for our LED. Click on Tools, Footprint Wizard. Click on Next, select Resistors, Millimeters, Next, SMT, Next, go to DigiKey, find our LED, open datasheet, have a look if there is recommended footprint, here it is. So the path size is 0 0.7 by 0 0.7, go back to Altium, put here 0 0.7, 0 0.7, next. Uh, this is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7, so 1.4. Next, we can leave this default, and I'm going to call it let 0603 green. Finish. Be sure we are using millimeters, and grid is set to 0 0.1 millimeter. We can uh, move this a little bit down. Also this. And now one of these two pins, uh, it has to be marked as cathode. So go back into our schematic symbol library. And pin number one is cathode. Here is the K. So go back into footprint library. This one is going to be the standard. But this one has to be a little bit special. So I'm going to move this only a little bit, maybe like this. Now, be sure you are on top of Erlai. Click on Place, Fill, and maybe make something like this. Oops. Escape. Perfect. We are going to place 3D model into our footprint. So go to DigiKey, uh, find our LED, and let's have a look if they have 3D model here. So here is the step file what we need. And it looks like uh, it's opening in, in the next tab. So what we are going to do, we are going to select everything, Control A, Control C, and we will just paste this into a file which I'm going to create in our project directory. I'm going to call the file let step and I'm going to paste it here, Control V, save it. And this is the 3D model of our LED. Go back to Altium. Be sure you are on mechanical one layer, left click here, go to place, 3D body, Select the uh, LED 3D model, click on Open, left click, Escape, press number 3, click on Tools, 3D Body Placement, Align Face with Board, select the 3D model, select the bottom of our path. Now press number 2, hover cursor somewhere here, press left button, Hold it down, press spacebar to rotate, spacebar to rotate, spacebar to rotate, and place it like this. Press number three, press shift, press right button, hold it down, and uh, double check this mark. When we go into data sheet, Uh, this should be facing the same way as the cathode is. So in our footprint, this is the cathode. You can see this is the marked pin. So it is facing to the cathode. Perfect. We can go back to the uh, 2D view and we can finish our footprint. Only what is missing is the assembly drawing layer. So go on top of that line, press Shift S, select everything, Control C, left click, go on top assembly, edit 
paste special, be sure this is checked, paste, left click escape, left click into empty space to unselect everything, go into our PCB library, go into R0805 footprint, select designator, control C, left click, go into our LED footprint, click on edit, paste special, paste on current layer and left click here. Very often I use a dot to mark pin 1 location in the footprint and we will do it also for this LED but a little bit later because I would like to show you how you can uh, update footprints once you have them in the PCB. So we will do it later. Now just save this footprint, go to tools, use footprint wizard and we are going to create our last footprint. Click on next. Uh, this time we are going to use this dual inline package or dip in millimeters. Next. Uh, go to DigiKey, find data sheet, and um, recommended hole size is 1.2 and the distance between the holes is 2.54. So here I'm going to put 1.2 millimeter. Here I'm going to use 1.6 and here I'm going to use 2. These are usually the numbers what I normally uh, use for this kind of true hole pins. So you can use same numbers. Click on next. Uh, this one is going to be 2.54. This is not important because we will delete these pins. This is not important. Uh, we would like to use four pins. Click on next. I'm going to call it header 1x2. Next and finish. Left click into this uh, footprint area. Press shift S, shift S. Now select all these. Press delete. And we would like to move this reference point, so click on edit, set reference, center, because it will be easier to draw the outline around the connector. This reference is basically the point where position 0, 0 is located. Watch, when I move cursor here, see, it says 0, 0. We are going to draw outline around this connector. So go to data sheet. The length is going to be A, which is 200 mils for two pin connector. And the width is going to be 230 mils. Remember, okay, 200 by 230. Basically, we are going to draw a rectangle 200 by 230 mils around this uh, connector. And because we are using mills, I'm going to click here and left click. I would like to change grid, press G. I would like to use five mills. Uh, we are going to draw on top overlay, make it active. Click on place, line, press tab. And be sure the width is 0.2 millimeter. Left click here. And because here is zero, 00, I would like to jump to half of the size. So press J on your keyboard, new location, and use this 115 by 100. Okay, don't move your mouse, left click and go down and watch the dimensions down here or the position down there. It should be 115 by minus 100. Uh, like this, left click, left click. Now it should be minus 115 by minus 100. Left click, left click, go up. One uh, hundred minus 115 by 100. Left click, left click, left click, right click, right click. Go back to data sheet and we are going to draw this. So basically here is pin one location, 
The length of this is B for two pin connector. It is 100 mils and it is going to start. Uh, so this is going to be zero, 74 minus 21. Uh, let's say 55 mils from zero. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Okay, just draw it this way. Go to Altium, click on place, line. So here, we would like to start drawing at uh, minus 115 uh, by 50, left click, and we would like to finish at minus 55, like this, left click, down here, uh, minus 55 uh, and Y minus 50, left click, left click, right click, right click. For this kind of footprint, it can be useful to mark pin 1 location. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place string, left click, escape. I'm going to change this to 1. A height 60 mils, width 10 mils, that's okay. And I'm going to place it here. We are going to add 3D model, so go to the G key, find our header, scroll down, and we can again use the Snap EDA 3D model. Left click, left click here, and download the 3D model. The downloaded file will be this zip file, so I go inside and I'm going to copy this 3D model into our project directory. Go to Altium, be sure you are on mechanical one layer, click on place, 3D body, select our 3D model, open, left click, escape, press number 3, click on tools, 3D body placement, align faces, left click on this 3D model, left click on the bottom of our header, press number 2, and move it into the middle, like this, press number 3, I'll double check if the position of this is correctly marked down here, it is. Okay, double check also if the holes and the pads are correctly aligned with the pins and also double check if the outline, what we just created, if it goes nicely around the header. Everything seems to be fine, so let's go back to the 2D view, press number 2, and we are going to add the assembly drawing layer. Zoom out, go on top of Erlai, press Shift S, select this, Control C, left click, go on top assembly, click on edit, paste special, paste on the current layer, left click and unselect everything. We are going to mark pin 1 location, uh, so go to place, use full circle and place it into X and Y, somewhere like, I don't know, 80 by 65, here, left click, left click, escape. When it is selected, uh, change the width to be 20 and change the radius to be 8 mils. What is still missing is the designator, click on place, string, left click, escape, delete this, click here, find a dot designator, set the height to be 1.2 millimeter and width is going to be 0.2 millimeter. We would like to use center in the middle, move it somewhere here and maybe a little bit to the right, maybe like this. 
we are almost finished. Uh, what I would like to do, I would like to move this reference to pin number one. Click on edit, set reference pin one. Left click into this empty space, press shift S, shift S, and our footprints are ready. Don't forget to save your library. Some people, they prefer to download the footprint. So what you can do, uh, you don't have to create them manually. You can, for example, use the Snap EDA website, go to 2D models, download the footprint. Or also you can use the uh, Altium panels and manufacture parts search if there is footprint for specific component, like for this resistor. Uh, you can see there is footprint here. You can just simply download it. And once you download these files, this is how it looks. I'm going to click on download and I'm going to save it. Now go inside of the file, what we have just downloaded. And uh, this is the library, what we would like to use. So I'm going to copy it here, just for demonstration. I'm going to make this smaller. And I'm going to drag and drop it into our Altium. See, so this is basically, this is the uh, PCB library, what we have downloaded. And inside of the PCB library, there are four footprints. I'm going to close this. And if you would like to use some of these footprints, just use right click, copy, go into our PCB library, and right click, paste one component. Okay, now we have in our library the footprint that we have downloaded from internet, but I don't want to do it this way, so I'm going to uh, delete this because we already have this footprint, and I'm going to also close this library. Uh, I just wanted to show you the possibility of downloading the schematic symbols and PCB footprints from internet because I know some people prefer to do it this way and also uh, people always ask me in comments why they can't download the uh, symbols and footprints from internet. They can, they can use them. Uh, just be careful because you may want to always check these downloaded symbols and footprints and also you may want to adjust them because, for example, they may be using different layers or they may uh, be a little bit different from what you would like to use in your project. Well, let's go back to our project and now when we have all the footprints created, I'll go back into our schematic symbol library and we need to assign these footprints to our symbols. So select the first symbol, the uh, connector, click on add footprint, click on browse, and select the footprint for the connector or header. Okay, okay. Now, this is very important. If we go into our schematic right now and when we select this header, notice uh, there is still no footprint assigned to this symbol. Always when you make some changes in your schematic symbol library, you need to use also right click and you need to use this update schematic sheets. Okay, left click, if I go Okay, if I go back into our schematic now, then notice when this symbol is selected, now it also has footprint assigned. So we have to do exactly the same also for the resistor, click on it footprint, click on browse, select the resistor footprint, okay, okay, right click, update schematic sheets, okay, and also select the diode, add footprint, Select the diode footprint, OK, OK. Right click, update schematic sheet, OK. If we go into our schematic, when we select the resistor, we should see the footprint assign and also we should see the footprint for the LED. When everything looks OK, don't forget to go back into our schematic symbol library, save it, and also I will save this uh, PCB library. Possibly you can use this save all button, 
But uh, in some cases, especially when you have more projects open, this uh, save all button is maybe not something what you would like to use. That's why I often just use this simple save button. Our schematic is almost finished. Uh, what we would like to do next is to replace these question marks with numbers to have proper component designators. And Altium can do this uh, automatically. Just click on Tools, Annotation, Annotate Schematic. Click on this uh, Update Changes list. Uh, you can see uh, Altium found uh, three components where we would like to update the component designators. Press OK. You can see here the suggestions. Click on Accept Changes. This is what is going to happen. The question mark is going to be D1. This one is going to be J1, R1. Execute changes, close, close. And uh, now you can see it is R1, D1, J1. Our schematic is done. And we would like to know if there are no errors. So right click on the project, click on validate, go to panels, messages, and there are no errors. Perfect. Before we import this schematic into our PCB, I'm going to make one small change in settings, project, project options, class generation. I'm going to uncheck this and this. If you don't know what this means, don't worry. You can just uncheck this and you can find out later how this is used. But I don't use it, so I uncheck this, press OK. And we are ready to import our schematic to PCB. Click on Design, update PCB. This is what is going to happen. We are going to import components and nets into our PCB. Click on execute changes. Be sure everything is green. Click on close and uh, go into this PCB panel. To zoom in, zoom out, uh, by default, you need to press Ctrl, hold it down and use mouse wheel. Or you can go into these uh, system preferences, system mouse wheel configuration, and you can uncheck this. Okay? When you uncheck this, then you don't have to uh, use control and mouse wheel together. You just can use mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, these are the components from our schematic. This is our PCB. We are going to change the shape of this PCB because it's too big. So in this properties panel, I'm going to click on millimeters because we would like to work with millimeters. I'm going to adjust the grid, double click here, and I'm going to change it to 20 millimeters. Okay, go to view, select this board planning mode or press number one on your keyboard. Uh, left click inside of this board area, and we are going to move these edges. Uh, make the new board somewhere here in this area. So I'm going to move it like this, 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 and this. Okay. View, go back to 2D layout mode or press number 2 on your keyboard. Uh, left click into this area, press G, change the grid to 0.5 millimeter. Select all these components, we can move them a little bit closer. And we would like to move this 0, 0 position, or it is called origin. So set new origin into this uh, bottom left corner of our PCB. We are going to set the stack up for this PCB. Click on Design, Layer Stack Manager. This is simple to layer PCB. So everything what I'm going to do, I'm going to just change this dielectricum thickness to 1.6 millimeter. Save it. We can close it. And we can continue to work on our PCB. We are going to set basic rules for our PCB. Click on Design, Rules. Inside of Design Rules, Electrical Clearance, Clearance, select this. And we would like to use 0.3 mm. So this is the minimum distance between uh, electrical objects, like minimum uh, distance between tracks or track and via, track and pad, and this kind of objects, OK? 0.3. You will get this number from your PCB manufacturer. 
Then we would like to set the track width. I'm going to use preferred width 0.5 millimeter, minimum 0.3, maximum 1 millimeter. The vias, what we are going to use, so they are going to be 0.6, uh, the pad size, and 0.3, the hole size. So 0.6, 0.6, 0.6. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and there is one more rule, what I would like to set, this one, silk to solder mask, and I'm going to change this to 0 0.1 millimeter. Okay. We are going to place components on our PCB, use mouse wheel to zoom out, and uh, you can press right button on your mouse, hold it down to move the PCB or pan the PCB like this. Uh, if you would like to move components, hover cursor over the header, press left button, hold it down, and move it on our board or on our PCB. Do exactly the same for the resistor, press spacebar to rotate, and place it on our PCB. Now, watch these uh, lines. They are telling you which paths are connected together, and maybe we don't want to place the resistor this way. Maybe we would like to place it like this. Uh, same for the LED, we don't want to place it uh, this way because then this path needs to be connected with this one and it's not like nice connection. Maybe we would like to rotate the LED and place it like this. We are going to connect these two paths together and we would like to route them on top layer. So left click on this top layer tab to make the layer active, click on Route and select Interactive Routing. Left click into middle of this path, uh, you will see this circle uh, in the cursor, okay? So always when you see the circle, it means you are in the middle of the path. So left click here, left click maybe somewhere here, left click, left click, and Escape or you can use right click on your mouse. To adjust the shape of this track, uh, you can select uh, this segment, just left click. You can press uh, left button, hold it down, and you can move it, maybe make it a little bit nicer like this. If you would like to change the width, uh, left click to select one of the segments, press tab to select all the uh, segments on this uh, layer, and you can change the width here. We would like to use maybe, let's say, 0.5 millimeter, enter. To unselect everything, left click into empty space. Uh, you can also change the width of the track directly when you are doing layout. So uh, go to route and use interactive routing, or you can use this button which is here. Left click. Now press tab and set the width which you would like to use here, 0.5. Go and press this uh, pause button. Uh, left click into middle of this path, and you can see now we are using 0.5 millimeter track width. Connect the LED, left click, right click. We could directly connect this path uh, with this one on top layer, but uh, I would like to show you how you can use vias and how you can route on the bottom layer of our PCB. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just draw a very short track here from this path, maybe something like this, left click, escape, escape, select this, press delete on your keyboard, now go to place and uh, place a via, don't place path, okay, this is very important, place via, so left click here, now press tab, in this properties panel, we would like to set the diameter of our via to be 0.6, and the whole size is going to be 0.3, because that's what we set in the rules, and this is uh, basically the via which can be used by our PCB manufacturer. And also we would like to set the solder mask expansion to manual, and we would like to tend the vias. Uh, tented via, it means uh, the PCB color will be covering also the uh, via. Okay, press this pause button, and now simply just place the via on the track, what we already have in our PCB. Left click. 
we are going to draw big ground plane on the bottom layer of our PCB. So make the bottom layer active, left click here, click on place, polygon pour. Press tab, we would like to connect this polygon to ground. Press this pause button, left click, left, 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 right, right. And I left click into empty space to unselect the polygon. Notice uh, this ground plane is very nicely connected to this ground via and also to the ground pin of our header. If you would like to see the top layer, simply just make the top layer active. When you are doing PCB layout very often, uh, you may find out that uh, maybe you need to do some additional changes in your schematic and in your PCB, and that's what we are going to learn in the next step. Go to Project, open our schematic, and let's say we would like to add one more resistor and one more LED. So I'm going to select them, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and I'm going to place them maybe like here. We would like to connect it. Escape. Uh, we need to rename this uh, net because otherwise they would be connected together and we don't want to connect them together. They need to have different name. And also we need to annotate the uh, resistor and the LED. We can do it manually. You can just write here R2 and D2. Or you can use the uh, annotate feature in Altium. Click on save, go to design, update PCV. You can see uh, we are going to add uh, D2 and R2 components and we are going to uh, connect these pins and this net. Click on execute changes, close. We would like to place these components on the bottom because we would like to learn how to do it. So make the bottom layer active, uh, press left button holding down, move the resistor and press L to place it on the bottom. Press spacebar to rotate and spacebar, spacebar, place it maybe like this. Same for the LED, press L, place it on the bottom, press spacebar to rotate and place it maybe like this. Now, uh, we would like to adjust this uh, polygon, left click and move it maybe like this. You can redraw it. So when it is selected, uh, use this repair button in this properties panel. We would like to connect this path to this one. and we would like to connect this path to this one. Okay, connect this, right click, left click to unselect everything and make the top layer active. We are going to make these uh, overlay layers a little bit nicer. I'm going to move this also this, this one, this one. I'm going to add some text on the top overlay layer, so make it active, left click, click on place, string, left click, escape, select it. I'm going to change this to plus and change the height to be 1.2 and the width 0.2. Uh, we would like to place it to this plus pin. Okay, select it, Control C, left click, Control V, left click, select it, change this to minus, enter, move it maybe like here and Ctrl V, left click, select it and put here the name of your company or your name, for example, the Devil Academy. 
So everyone knows you created this PCB. We would like to add one more layer into our PCB. Left click on this color, right click somewhere here, add mechanical layer. Uh, we would like to add a board outline layer. So here select board and press OK. Make the board layer active. And uh, on this layer, we would like to draw the shape of our PCB. So go to place, line, press tab, uh, double check the line width. I'm going to use 0.2 millimeters, so this is correct. Go back into our PCB, left click, left, 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 right click, right click, fit board. There are two layers which we would like to check, and these are the assembly layers which we created in our footprints. So I'm going to disable all the layers, and I'm going to enable the assembly bottom layer. Okay, this is good. So basically, uh, this uh, bottom assembly layer is telling us that R2 and D2 are placed here in our PCB. If you like, you can uh, go to view and you can uh, flip the board. So basically, you will see the board from the bottom and you can nicely read the text. I will go back, I will flip the board back on the top and I'm going to disable this bottom assembly layer. I would like to see the top assembly layer. And uh, this one is good, but uh, when we were creating this uh, diode uh, footprint, I told you that in assembly drawing, uh, very often I place here also a circle. So uh, in the next step, we are going to learn how we can update footprint, which is already used in our PCB. So if we would like to add a dot into this footprint, we need to go back into our PCB library. Uh, we need to find our footprint, press Shift S, be sure you are on top assembly layer, and I'm going to place full circle here. Press uh, G, I would like to use 0 0.1 grid, maybe like here left click, left click, escape, and I would like to change the width to be 0.3 millimeter and radius 0.1 millimeter. I can move it a little bit, maybe here, and also I can move this designator, maybe like this. Save the uh, library, and this is very important. Right click on the footprint what you just changed and select update PCB with this footprint. Left click. When you press OK, then all the footprints in your PCB are going to be updated with this new footprint. Press OK, go to PCB and here is the dot in our existing footprint. Perfect. In case you would like to see all the layers again, uh, you can simply just click on this LS button, select all layers. And also we would like to see 3D model of our board. Click on view and select 3D layout mode or press number three on your keyboard. Wow! Press shift, hold it down, press right button on your mouse, hold it down and you can have a look on your board. You designed this by yourself? Well done. Go back to view, 2D layout mode. Before we start generating outputs, which are needed to manufacture this PCB, there is one more thing what we would like to do. We would like to be sure there are no mistakes, there are no errors, or it is called violation. We would like to be sure there are no violations in our PCB. And I'm going to make one intentional violation so we can learn how to find these violations and also how to fix them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this text here. And I know there is going to be error or there is going to be violation because this is a violation marker. To check 
our PCB for uh, violations, go to tools, select design rule check, and click on run design rule check. You can see there is one violation in our PCB and in this list you can see it's about silk to silk clearance rule. Uh, the best way to find where exactly in your PCB is this uh, problem, go to PCB, go to panels, open rules and violations window and I'm going to move it here. I'm going to click on all rules down here. Uh, are all the violations or errors in our PCB. There is only one. Left click, it is in this place. And when you double click here, uh, you can see why we are getting this uh, problem. So basically this silk to silk clearance rule is set to 0.254 millimeter, but in our PCB, the distance between track and text is zero millimeter. Uh, there are two ways how you can usually uh, fix these violations. You can change the rule, so left click here, and if you like you can change the minimum distance here, or in, I, in our case much better way to fix this error is just move this text. So watch what is going to happen here when I move it. Okay, the violation is gone, we fixed our error, uh, go back to tools and rerun design rule check. So left click here, and left click here, just to be sure there are no more errors in our PCB. Perfect. This is very important. Sometimes when you fix some violations in your PCB, they may not automatically disappear from the list of the violations. So always when you fix uh, some violations in your PCB, you may want to rerun the design rule check, okay? Uh, you may want to go back to tools, design rule check and rerun design rule check. Our board is finished, uh, so what we would like to do, we would like to generate all the outputs to manufacture this PCB. I go back to projects and I'm going to use right click on the project, add new to project and we are going to add something what is called output job file. Right click here, save as and I'm going to call it LED job like this. The very first document what we are going to generate is the schematic. So in documentation left click on add, select schematic prints and use this project physical documents. Left click here, I'm going to name it schematic, right click on this schematic, click on configure, uh, we would like to print this schematic in color, I'm going to leave everything else default, press ok, and now in this list go up, select PDF, because we would like to print our schematic into PDF, left click here, make this connection, now left click on change, left click here and I would like to use separate file name for each output what we are going to generate. Left click, done, ok, and generate content. This is our schematic printed into PDF. If you go into our project directory, then inside the project output you will find schematic print uh, directory and inside there is the schematic what we have just generated. The next document what we are going to generate is 3D PDF. So in documentation click on add, select PDF 3D PCB document, right click, page setup, we would like to use color, close, right click, uh, configure and we would like to use default. Ok. Uh, we would like to make connection because we would like to print this uh, 3D model into PDF, so we would like to uncheck this and left click here, click on generate. Once this opened, you need to left click, then you need to trust this document and you need to left click again. This is... Uh, 3D model of our board, which can be viewed in standard 
Adobe Reader. And I love this document because anyone basically can see 3D model of your board. If you go into our project directory, again, you will find a new directory with the 3D PDF, what we have just generated. Next, uh, we are going to generate 3D model of our board, which can be used, for example, when you will be creating uh, enclosure. So in export outputs, click on add. We would like to export step PCB document, right click, configure. I'm going to use everything default. Uh, this time we are not going to generate PDF. So select this folder structure, make the connection and uh, double check this. I'm going to leave this default, press generate. Go to project directory. And <gasps> there is nothing new. If we go up, there is this new output directory for free documents created. I think this is a bug in Altium or something. Sometimes this happens when you generate some new documents. So everything, what you need to do, go back to Altium and uh, regenerate the document again. Okay, go back to our project directory. And now when we go into outputs for our LED, then now there is this uh, new directory where is the step file for our board. Okay, so if you see, that this uh, free documents directory was uh, generated, just simply regenerate the output what you were generating uh, as the last one, and then it will be correctly generated inside of this project output directory. The simplest way to check the 3D model of our board, what we have just generated, is go into our PCB, click on place, 3D body, find the 3D model, it is inside of our project output directory. This is the step file, open, left click, escape, go into 3D view, and here it is. This is 3D model of our board. You can use it in any uh, mechanical or CAD system, uh, for example, to create the enclosure or box around your board. Go back to 2D view. And I'm going to delete this 3D model because we don't need it here in our PCB. And I go back into our job file. We are going to generate a document which you may find useful if you would like to, for example, manufacture this PCB at home. So in documentation, click on add, select composite PCB document, left click here. I'm going to call it layers. Right click on layers, select configure, and uh, we would like to print in black and white, so we use mono, and we would like to print in one to one size, so be sure actual size and 100% is used. Click on pages, I'm going to delete this one, I'm going to add new page, and I'm going to edit layers on this new page. Click on manage page layers. We would like to add top layer and board outline. Go back to new print out. I'm going to call it top. And if you would like to see it, uh, you can just click here refresh. Okay, so this is the top layer and the board outline. We would like to also show the hole. So I'm going to check this and refresh again. We would like to add uh, one more page. Click on add page, uh, edit layers. Manage page layers. We would like to uh, put there the bottom layer, board outline. Go back to new print out. I'm going to call it bottom. And we would like to add holes and also we would like to mirror this layer. Now refresh, go on second page. And this is the bottom layer of our PCB. So if you would like to uh, manufacture your PCB at home, this is something what you may need. Now, this is very important. For some reason, this default PDF generator doesn't work very well if you need to print something in scale one to one. So instead, go down here, click on Add, and use Microsoft Print to PDF. Left click, select it, uh, 
click here to connect the layers with the printer, click on preview and be sure the scale is set to 100%. Click on print and I'm going to save it into our output directory and I'm going to call it layers. Go to our project directory and open the PDF what we have just generated. If you would like to print it, go to File, Print and be sure the actual size is selected, press Print. When you measure this printed PCB, then uh, you will find out the size of this printed PCB is going to be exactly the size what we used when we designed our PCB. Do you remember what is the size of the PCB what we designed? 20 by 20 millimeters. So this is the way how you can print in scale one to one. Next, we are going to generate assembly drawing layer, which is going to help you when you will be fitting components on your PCB. In assembly, click on add, select assembly drawing PCB document, right click, configure. We would like to use colors and we would like to print in scale fit document on page. We would like to have it as big as possible. Click on pages. Uh, we are going to edit these layers and we would like to keep there only the top assembly. So I'm going to use shift, left click, press control, uh, left click, delete all these layers. We would like to keep there only top assembly and board outline. Go back to this top assembly uh, drawing, select the bottom assembly drawing, edit layers. Here we would like to delete everything except bottom assembly and board outline. Delete. Go back to bottom assembly. On the bottom assembly, we would like to mirror this layer and now refresh. So this is the top assembly and it is showing very nicely where every component is fitted on our board. If we go on the next page, it is mirrored and these are the components on the bottom of our PCB. Okay. To generate the output, select the PDF generator, connect it with assembly drawing, disconnect this, click on generate content, and this is the PDF. If we go into our project directory, you will notice new directory called PCB print, and here are the assembly drawings. The next file what we are going to generate is called pick and place. Go to assembly, click on add, select generate pick and place files, select document, right click, configure, and inside of this file there is position and rotation of every component used on your PCB. So this file is used by the machines which are going to build your boards. I'm going to leave everything default, click OK. Uh, we would like to generate this file uh, with this folder structure generator. I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to select this, click on generate content. If we go inside of our project directory, there is new directory called pick and place and inside there is the file what we have just generated. Go back to our job file, just double click here. And the next we are going to generate the most important files for PCB manufacturing and they are called Gerber files. In this fabrication, click on add, select Gerber files, PCB document, right click, configure, leave default, click on layers. We would like to generate Gerber files for top overlay, top paste, top solder, top layer, bottom layer, bottom solder, bottom paste, bottom overlay and board outline, leave everything else default, press OK, uh, click on this folder structure, unselect it here and select this, click on generate content. There are more ways how you can uh, check the Gerber files, you can check them in Altium, but I normally use software which is called ViewMate, it is a free software, just search for ViewMate, and if you like you can use it too, 
you can just uh, download it here and you can install it when you open view made this is how it looks now click on file import gerber i go inside of our project directory and there is this new directory called gerber here are the gerber files what we have just generated i'm going to copy this path just control c i go back to view made i'm going to paste it here control v enter and these are the files from our project i'm going to left click here control a to select everything click on import and click on yes the files which we generated and which we imported here, not all of them are Gerber files, but we don't need to care. We can switch off all the layers here. I'm going to enable the board outline, which is on mechanical four layer, just double click here. And here you can see the Gerber files. So this is the bottom layer, double click here. This is the bottom overlay. This is the bottom paste and bottom solder. I'm going to disable them, just double click, double click, double click, double click and we are going to check the top layer, double click, top overlay, top paste and top solder. So this is a very simple way how you can check the Gerber files. Go back to Altium, go back into our job file and the next file what your PCB manufacturer will need is called drill file. So in this uh, fabrication click on add select the nc drill files pcb document right click configure and i'm going to leave everything default just press ok and uh, we would like to generate it so unselect this select this click on generate easy way to check the drill files is go back into view made now select this uh, not used layer left click here go to file import drill and go up inside of our project directory there is new directory called nc drill and uh, the important file is this one this txt file let's click to select it import because of the other layers we can't really see this drill layer so i'm going to disable this double click double click double click and now you can see the holes here. I'm going to disable also this one. See? So the holes are in the right positions and also they are the right size. This is a very simple way how you can check the drill file. The last file what we are going to generate is called BOM, Bill of Material. And it is basically a list of all the components what we need to buy to be able to build our board. And uh, to generate this BOM, you will need Microsoft Excel and you will need a template for this BOM file. You can download this template from our GitHub. Just uh, go to Google and search for GitHub PDVL. Click here. Go to YouTube Altium Quick Tutorial. Left click on this BOM for such a PDVL live template and download it. Left click here. Here is the file what we have just downloaded and I'm going to copy it inside of our project directory. If you have a look what is inside of this template, I'm going to open it. Then uh, basically this specify the format of the bill of material what we are going to use. And these columns which are here, they are going to be filled out with the parameters which we imported from DigiKey. Do you remember if we go back into our schematic symbol library. I'm going to open it, double click here. And uh, if you select a component, then here are the parameters which we can use then in the bill of material. For example, the, this manufacturer and manufacturer part number, that's exactly what is going to be filled up here in this manufacturer, manufacturer part number. Go back to our job file, just double click here. And to generate BOM, we would like to go inside of report, click on add, bill of materials, project, right click, page setup, we would like to use color, close, right click, configure. Go to columns, delete this, 
left click, left click, and finally breath down here. Here it is. Watch what is going to happen when we use it. So right now, uh, each component is on one line, and when we drag and drop Libref here, then basically all the components, all the same components are going to be grouped and the quantity of these components is going to be increased. Uh, here we would like to enable all the columns which are in our template. So I'm going to find which we need. I'm going to disable comment. We don't need comment, but we need category. And also we need all the columns which are related to supplier. This. Enable all these columns with supplier here. Notice, the, notice this special icon here. Basically, if uh, we have a look on these uh, columns right now, they are empty. We need to enable this uh, icon here to um, download the information for this uh, about this supplier. So enable it here and all the columns will be filled up. Go back to general. We would like to create the bomb for let's say 1000 pieces. And we would like to use uh, currency USD and we would like to use our template. So left click here. I'm going to copy the path to our template. I'm just going to do Ctrl C, go back to Altium. I'm going to use Ctrl V, enter, and I'm going to select our template. Open. And I'm going to check this. So when we move the project, it will uh, generate the bomb always correctly. Uh, what you may want to do, you may want to also order this, or for example, based on the category, just left click here, left click, left click, like this, and uh, it's ready. Press OK. To generate the bomb, we would like to use folder structure, so I'm going to unselect this, and I'm going to select this, press generate. Once the bomb is created, it should open automatically. If it doesn't, you can go inside of the project directory, inside of the outputs. Here is the new bomb directory, and this is the file what we have just generated. When we have a closer look at the file, you can see uh, there is a lot of information. So you can very nicely use this file to go into uh, DigiKey and based on the supplier number you can order the components what you need for your board. Here you can see this supplier, it uh, has these components in stock and here you can see also price for one piece. This is the price for the 2000 pieces which we need for our board and this is the total uh, price which we would pay right now if we would be ordering materials or components for 1000 of these boards what we have just designed. Really, really useful feature. And we are finished. This was the last file what we wanted to generate uh, for this project in this video. If you would like to download the finished project, you can go to Fedevel GitHub, just Google for Fedevel GitHub and go into this YouTube Altium Quick Tutorial, or you can use directly this URL address. I will attach this address under this video. Uh, here is the finished project from this video. You can just click here and download it. If you would like to learn more about electronics, we have a number of online courses. Just search for Fedevel Academy. I have created uh, basic and also very advanced courses about hardware design. You can find them all listed here. Or you can go on our marketplace and you can find there also courses from different people. Courses about KiCad, about EMC, about measuring, a lot of different courses. I really hope you found this tutorial useful. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!